my father, who loved me, who wanted the best for me, who was, who was teaching me what he had learned in his years of experience, if I intentionally uh, ignore that, oh man, um, that would be really, really dumb. My father, William Donald Prue, came back from World War II, 1945, and within a few months entered the home building business in Southern California. He, he was working at a gas station and he told the owner of the gas station, hey, I'm gonna get in the carpentry business and the home building business. And the guy said, oh, I don't think you should do that. The, the building boom's about over. Well, obviously it was not about over. My father went to work building houses. Uh, at that time, as all the GIs were coming home from World War II, Southern California was exploding and they were building high volume tracks uh, subdivisions. It was not, not uncommon to get on a subdivision of 700 or 1,000 or 1,500 homes and you start here and you don't stop until they're all done. That was not uncommon. And my father, over his career, really became an expert really at one one thing i shouldn't say that but one thing he did become an expert in was high volume tracked home building not custom homes not commercial development um, not land development really in high production home building now that i'm building a, a subdivision um, that is a build to rent subdivision i have the the ability to build in the same manner that my father uh, um, coached me on, and that's high volume. So in our subdivision here, we're building the first phase is 40 homes. And here in Reno, um, most of the subdivisions are building, uh, let's call it uh, prior to the interest rate bump, they were building maybe 10 a month and they would release 10 homes a month. Or maybe five homes would be the release, and then uh, two weeks later, they'd release five more. And I'm building this subdivision completely different. We literally are releasing 40 homes at one time. I, I, as I was talking to subcontractors, I said, uh, our first phase is 40 homes, and they say, well, okay, how many are you releasing? 40. No, 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 I, I, hear, I heard what you said, but how many of those 40 are you releasing? 40. Our concrete company, we specifically targeted a high volume uh, concrete foundation subcontractor. We explained what that we were looking for and they were like, yes, that's the exact kind of job we want. And so I have 40 foundations that are ready to go. Uh, we're pouring some on Monday. We poured some the other day. We are, we are not gonna start the next operation until my concrete guy is done. Then we're gonna do a, some quick uh, fine grading and then the framer starts. And the instructions to the framing contractor is, you start on lot one and you don't stop until you're done with lot 40. And, and that's how I've been able to get subcontractors in this town. I'm not a, a, a big home builder and, and home builders that are in this town have um, subcontractors that work for them. And these subcontractors, um, are loyal to these big builders. Some of them are publicly traded national home builders. Well, how's a little guy compete with that? Well, my father taught me that every day a subcontractor is trying to decide where to send their labor. Maybe it's the night before and they're thinking, okay, where should I send all my guys tomorrow? Or uh, if they're planning ahead, where do I send them come uh, next Tuesday? And so they think about this, um, every day trying to decide where to send their labor and their resources. So my goal as a home builder is to create a situation where they send or where they send their labor to my job, where they choose my job over another job here in town. And I've done that a few ways. One, we have lots of room for them to, to go and to move. A job that's building maybe five houses, um, there's a lot of start and stop and, and inefficiency. Oftentimes those five floor plans, they're all different and they have op uh, different options and they're complicated. 
I'm building a very simple floor plan on this subdivision. It's a four rent subdivision, three bedroom, two bath, 1,344 square feet, super simple. So a subcontractor, when they're trying to decide where to send their labor, they can either choose that complicated job across town or they can send them to my job where they can come in, blow it out and make money and get paid quickly. So that's how I'm competing with the other um, home building companies. So I've, I've uh, chosen a floor plan that's super efficient for the, for the subcontracting trades to, to get in and work. I've also created a, um, a, a high volume situation where instead of sending, let's just say they have uh, 20 members of their staff or crews that they send out every day. Uh, maybe they send five to this job, five to that one, five to that one, five to the other one. Well, I have a situation where they can send all 20, they can manage the job better, they can um, um, really produce higher volume, competition, you get all 20 on this job and blow the job out. So they'll, in all reality, they'll neglect the other jobs for a little while, while they are um, on this job making money. So. We're building a high volume track subdivision. I could only really do this because we're building a build to rent. Otherwise your, your construction lender won't let you build 40 houses out in advance, uh, hoping that they sell. Um, I'm glad this project is build to rent. The market rate has changed since I um, got my construction loan. The, 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 the uh, interest rates have increased trying to, to, to slow down the economy due to inflation and, um, and it's working, but there's still need for rental homes. So there's safety for me in building a build to rent project. And I can come in and blow them out as cheap as possible. Not cheap isn't the best word in an, in an efficient, um, cost cutting way. When you have, when, when everything's a replication, it's more affordable. It's easier to manage. It's easier to get the, uh, the supplies. There's less complications. There's less mess ups. There's less confusion. It's simple. I had someone ask me the other day, so what's your schedule? Don't have a schedule. Now that seems very odd, but I learned this from my father. He says, you don't use a schedule. Really dad, don't we need a schedule? This was 20 years ago. He was teaching me this. He says, no. You start your foundation concrete guy on lot one and you tell him the schedule is don't stop until you're done with lot 40. Then your framer will start and he starts on lot one and he doesn't stop until he's done with lot 40. And when the, when the framing contractor gets to about maybe four houses or five houses completed, then the plumber starts and he tries to catch him. And if he can catch him, then we hold off the plumber. We want the plumber not to catch the framer, but to, um, but to try and catch him. So maybe it's seven houses or, or, or eight houses in front of him. So the plumber has plenty of room to run and then he tries his hardest to catch that framer. And right behind the plumber is the heat and air person and right behind the heat and air is the electrician and they're all trying to catch that framer. They're all trying to catch the trade in front of them. Then your insulator starts and it's one operation, one job, so not 40 operations, uh, or if we broke them up into fives, um, it would be eight operations. That job will stretch on way too long. There's one operation. Start on lot one, don't stop until you're done. And that's how we're building the subdivision. And it's been a little bit, um, a little bit of salesmanship trying to explain this to our subcontractors, but we only pick subcontractors that got it. I had one drywall guy come in, he goes, no, nah, no, nah, you shouldn't do it that way. You should do five at a time. I'm like, nope. First off, if I forgot something that my father taught me, who was really an expert, if I forgot something, shame on me for not paying closer attention or forgetting or not, uh, um, not following his advice. But if I intentionally do something contrary to what my father, who loved me, who wanted the best for me, who was, who was teaching me what he had learned in his years of experience. If I intentionally 
Uh, ignore that. Oh, man. Um, that would be really, really dumb. And I'm not going to do that. My father was 42 years old when I was born. He had lived off a life before I ever came along. I was his youngest child. Um, save the best for last. So, no offense to any of my siblings. So, he really had a lot of experience before I ever came along. So, by the time I was getting to know what I wanted to do in my career, I was 18, 19, 20 years old. So, my father would have been 60, 61, 62. He, he had a lot of experience. He'd been at it for, he'd been at it a long time. I don't want to do the math. Um, I had a great coach in, uh, and I've talked about this in another video. I had some mentors that were my dad's age. Some were a little older, some were a little bit younger, but I had a, some real good coaching. And I'm utilizing what I was taught to build a high production subdivision. I was talking to a gentleman and he goes, that's not really done in Reno. Vegas, you can get some high production because the sales are there. Vegas is a, is a bigger market. And so the sales are there to justify some, um, some speculative building. Yes, there's more risk when you build homes out in advance and you're hoping that they sell. There is more risk than that, but Vegas is a bigger market. Reno really hasn't experienced that. So coming in and, and building 40 units at one time is a little bit rare. Um, I only know of one other builder that was doing that, and that's really at the height a um, year and a half ago that they were really producing a lot of homes. Here's a foundation ready to go. There's another one right here. I got, I got a bunch of them, and we're going to move through these things. This will be the fastest built subdivision in Reno in a long time. And so I'm using the experience taught by my father to build a high volume, build to rent subdivision in Reno, Nevada.